Okay, I gave you this sheet today in class, free, free fall problems, and part of your homework was to do numbers 1 to 5. Sorry, I was looking at the board to see what ones I had actually assigned. Numbers 1 to 5, okay? Um, in the videos from the last day you were home, I did the examples for free pro fall problems, okay? So let's take a look at numbers 1 to 5. Number 1, a brick fa falls freely from a high scaffold. All right, so it falls freely. Velocity initial is zero meters per second, and it's falling. So the acceleration is gravity going down. And it wants to know what is its velocity after four seconds for part A. So four seconds, and it's looking for VF. And part A. So what equation do I have that has a VF, a VI, an A, and a delta T? Well, it actually goes back to our grade 10 equation. A equals VF minus VI over delta T. We want to get the VF alone. The VI is zero, so it just disappears, and I can multiply both sides by delta T. So I get VF equals A delta T. So filling my numbers in. Oh, and and it's falling down, so I don't need to call down negative. It, the only motion here is down. So we can just let down be positive. So 9.81 meters per second squared times 4 seconds. VF equals 39.42 meters per second. And that 2 will be down because we, it works out to be positive and we call down positive. So that's part A. Part B says, how far does the brick fall in the first four seconds? So now we're looking for delta D. Okay, well, I have VI, I have A, I have delta T. Probably the easiest way to find delta D is to use the delta D is equal to VI delta T, one half A delta T squared equation. This will go to zero again, because VI is zero. Delta D is equal to 1 half. A is 9.81 meters per second squared. And the time was 4 seconds, which you're going to square. So 4 squared is 16. Half of 16 is 8. 8 times 9.81 is 78.48 meters. Works out to be positive, which was what we were calling down. There is number 1. Number 2 says, if you drop a golf ball, how far will it fall in a half a second? You're dropping it, VI is zero. A is 9.81 meters per second squared down, and the time is a half a second. And you're looking for delta D. So again, what, do you, what equation do you have that has a VI, an A, and a delta T in it? should be delta D is equal to VI delta T, one half A delta T squared. Again, the VI is zero, so this disappears. You're looking for delta D, so one half 9.81 meters per second squared times a half a second, oops, half a second squared. A half squared is a quarter, a half times a half is an eighth, so 9.81 divided by eight, should be 1.22625 meters. Works out to be positive, which means down, because I didn't put a negative on my 9.81, which means I was calling down positive, which is perfectly fine because there was no up. Number three, ah, there's an up. A tennis ball is thrown up in the air with an initial velocity of 22.5 meters per second. So this ball is going up. So the VI at the bottom, 22.5 meters per second, and it's up. It is caught at the same height above the ground, so after it goes up, it's going to come back down. But it's going to go up. If we look at just the up part, it's going to go up until it stops. So at its highest point, it's going to stop. Gravity is going to be 9.81 meters per second squared down. And the question wants to know how high did it rise. So you're looking for the delta D, and you have the VI, the A, and the VF at the top. So we can do for part A, 
vf squared is equal to vi squared plus 2a delta d, and you're looking for delta d. So subtract vi squared from both sides. And then to get the delta d alone, divide by 2a. Okay, so delta d will equal vf squared minus vi squared over 2a. So delta d will equal, well, vf squared is actually 0. So it'll be subtract vi is 22.5 meters per second, and that's going to be squared. Divide it by 2 times, and now this time I have to put a negative on my 9.81 because the ball is going up and the gravity is acting down. But it's a good thing that I'm putting a negative on there because then it will cancel the negative on the top. So square your 22.5, the negative is outside so it stays, and then divide it by negative 19.62, 9 9.81 times 2, and you should get 25.80 meters works out to be positive, and that's because the ball was going up. That's part A. Part B says how long will it stay in the air? Well, we can find how long it go, takes to go up using our A, our VF, and our VI that we have here. So for part B, we know A is equal to VF minus VI over delta T. And if we want to look at just going up, we could call this TU. And we could rearrange for the time up. That's what the U stands for. Multiply both sides by delta T, divide by A. So it'll be VF minus VI over A. So delta TU will equal, well, VF was 0, so that disappears, minus 22.5 meters per second divided by negative 9.81 meters per second squared. And when you do this, you get the time that it takes to go up, and it works out to be 2.2936 seconds. So it takes 2.2936 seconds to go up, then it needs to turn around and come back. So delta T total will just be two times the time up. So double your time up and get 4.587 seconds as your final answer. Number four says a, pit, a person falls one meter to the floor. So delta D is one meter going down. The VI is zero, we're assuming they weren't me moving before they fell. And A is 9.81 meters per second squared down. So we're back to everything going down. How long does it take to fall? You're looking for delta T. What equation do you know that has a delta D, a VI, and A, and a delta T in it? Delta D is equal to VI delta T, one half A delta T squared. And because the VI is zero, 0 times this delta t is going to be 0. And because of that, it makes my rearranging life a lot easier. I want to get the delta t alone, so multiply both sides by 2, and then divide by a. So delta t squared is going to be 2 delta d over a. So 2 times 1 meter divided by 9.81 meters per second squared. Now remember, when you get this answer, it's going to be t squared, and then you need to take the square root. And when you take the square root, you get 0 0.45, <clears throat> excuse me, 1, 5 seconds. All right, part B says, how fast is the person going? Now you want the final velocity. So I'd probably use vf. So vf squared equals vi squared plus 2a delta d. The vi is 0, so vf squared is equal to 2 times 9.81 meters per second squared times 1 meter. vf squared equals 19.62 meters squared per second squared. Take the square root and get a vf of 4.429 meters per second. Okay, number five, a pitcher throws a baseball straight up with an initial velocity, so again, my VI 
is 27 meters per second up. 